Hi, this is Ray Moss Older, and I am going to share with you one of my favorite verses and say a bit about it. But the author of this book is Matt Stibb, 100 Bible Verses That Will Change Your Life, or as I say it, 100 down now to 64. Bible verses that will change your life. This is a beautiful verse. Joel 2, 28, in the King James Version, reads, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And of that verse, I'm the old man who dreams dreams. <laughs> but uh, seriously, I do. Wonderful dreams. But I also, Acts 2 began this moment. And in the Old Testament, Matt will be telling us even more. Joel 2.28 in the NIV. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Joel's name means Yahweh is God. And Yahweh is another word for God. Very little is known about who he was or when he prophesied. Some argue that he prophesied in the 8th century BC. Others propose that he prophesied after the exile in the 5th century BC. Joel 2.28 is perhaps the most famous of his prophecies. Like other Old Testament prophets, Joel prophesies a day when God will pour out his spirit. Isaiah 32.15, Isaiah 44.1-5, through 5, and Ezekiel 39.29 confirm this. Joel 2.28 forms part of a promise that Yahweh will bless his people with his visible, glorious presence and never again allow them to be put to shame. The fulfillment of this will be in Jerusalem hundreds of years later when the Holy Spirit falls upon the 120 disciples of Jesus on the day of Pentecost. Acts 2, 1 through 21. Then the long draught of the Holy Spirit, lasting 400 years, will come to an end with the deluge of the Father's love from heaven. This is a constant reminder to all those who claim to know the Father that we must be people constantly filled with the Holy Spirit and overflowing with the Holy Spirit, not relying on our own wisdom and strength. I have seen Jesus Christ in a vision. And I've talked about this before, but I'm going to again share it. When I came to Bethel Church with Georgia uh, in 2006, very soon afterwards, when we were in something called the School of the Supernatural, which was totally biblical, um, we were one day visited by 
Bill's secretary, who had an amazing gift. And it was to take people as if you were in an elevator to take people to heaven. And we knew who she was. We knew what that gift was. So it was that, and you want to remember this, this was not many months after I had been in adultery for four and a half years to my shame. And she came in and she simply said, if you'd like to go to heaven, close your eyes. I'm going to pray a prayer and you'll be there. This wasn't hypnotism. It wasn't something foolish. I'm smarter than that. I really am. But I closed my eyes. And the next thing I knew, I was in heaven. And how do I know? Because Jesus was standing right before me. You say, how did you know it was Jesus? And my answer is, how do I know Georgia is Georgia? Because I'm so familiar with my Lord. And the Lord turned to me, and the first words he said shocked me to my toes. Because I had, as I say, not long ago been in adultery. And the Lord said to me, Ray, I've never been angry with you. Those were his first words. And you can imagine what that did to me. Because I thought I might get really told off. Instead, he said, I've never been angry with you. He said, come with me, I want to show you something. So I went with him, and there was this large area that was like a magnifying glass in a, in a trough. And as I looked through that glass, I could see our world. And he... Jesus said to me, before you come back up here, you're going to harvest all that wheat. And there was wheat everywhere, all over the world. Now, you want to remember that I had traveled for 34 years all over the world, but only to 25 countries. And suddenly, when the Lord said that to me, I had no idea how I could reach all the rest of those countries. And then he took me over to Father God, who was sitting on a throne. And Father God and Jesus laid their hands on me and prayed for this ministry. I didn't know what ministry it was at that time, but later would find out that it was this ministry where I would minister to 191 countries through reachmorenow.com and now YouTube television. Is God a God who keeps his word? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can count on it more than you can count on any human's words by far. I was never angry with you. He forgives sin, buries it in the deepest sea, and leaves it there. 
if you have something that is troubling you, you're in sin up to your eyeballs, as I was. Get out of it. That's the first step. And the Lord will work the timing and will work the way for you to get out of it. What a Lord we serve.